You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again, about to embark on the journey that is Education Wednesday, a very special journey. Today, you're going to get a just abundance of riches. <laughs> all you pro folks listening live, strap in. We got some good stuff coming for you, all you on-demand folks. You have to wait a little bit for all of it to hit the network for you, of course, but good stuff nonetheless. You got a double dose of Options Boot Camp coming at you today. So back-to-back episodes for all you pro folks. And then, of course, a little bit later today, you're going to get a live huddle with Mr. Overby from OPR as well. So if you, first off, if you're just listening to Boot Camp, you're not listening to the full network, including shows like Options Playbook Radio, which is very much a sister show to this one, then you should be upgrading to that wherever you're listening to this. Just search for Options Insider Radio Network. You'll find it. Sit, subscribe, and you're off to the races or you can go out and find OPR on whatever whatever platform you listen to this on, including our app. Our app has everything out there under the sun, and then you'll get all that goodness. Of course, if you want to join us live, you don't want to wait a week or two for the next episodes to drop on the old network and all sorts of other fun stuff, then theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. Of course, if you're really cool, don't tell anyone I told you this. This is just for you I'm talking to you, not to the person next to you. Slash Secret Club. That also works. Get you to some fun stuff there as well. You get live access. You get exclusive content. So if you want to go pro and you want to get pro Q&As, you want to get options oddities at the end of the week where we break down all sorts of crazy trades that went on during the week and talk ourselves into a few fun, crazy live trades as well, as well as, of course, fun giveaways. We're coming up a couple of days now. The September Pro Trading Crate will be going out. Who will be the lucky winner? Maybe it'll be you. Theoptionsdecider.com slash pro is the place to go to enter your name into the hat. And speaking of hats, I am also joined on the program today by the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli, the founder over there at Market Taker Mentoring, also the author of one or two or half a dozen options-oriented tomes. Uh, Mr. P, welcome back to Options Boot Camp, sir. Uh, it's good to be back, Mark. Uh, we've got some exciting things to talk about today, I understand. We do, we do. It feels weird not doing it face-to-face. We've done it face-to-face so many times now recently. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so hopefully, listeners, you folks all enjoyed those little live tastes, those little live glimpses we gave you into the Mastermind sessions there. Those were pretty fun. If you haven't checked them out, you missed them for whatever reason, go back in the archives. They'll be sitting there waiting for you over there. If you like what you hear, feel free to leave a nice five-star review, just like our friend Cody did this week. Cody just says, five stars, fun, and options in equal measure. Enjoy. Well, there you go, Dan. That's what we're bringing to the table. We're bringing fun and options in equal measure. So that kind of summarizes us pretty nicely, I think. Yes, fun and options. I like that. I like that a lot. Fun and options. So let's get to some of those options, a little bit of the old basic training. 
it's time to get in line. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. You're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Call in. Print bear to learn. Yes, Ah, there it is. So festive. Always 4th of July or Flag Day or any other patriotic holiday of choice here on good old boot camp, especially when we dive into the basic training, of course, the portion of the show where we break down some basic options, concept or technique or strategy and explain how you can utilize it in your own portfolios. And Dan, as you'll recall last week during our live mastermind session, We did a deep dive into the iron condor because, of course, we were speculating, given your feedback, that perhaps we were in the middle of an iron condor assance. In fact, that was our question of the week last week. Let me just pay it off here at the top of the show. But last week, we asked you folks, you know, inspired by your options boot camp feedback, it seems like we might be in the middle of an hashtag iron condor. (laughs) That's always a fun hashtag. Iron condor renaissance. Uh, This strategy was super hot a decade ago, probably really over a decade ago, uh, but it seems to have cooled in recent years. Is this strategy making a comeback? We gave you guys four choices. Yes, I'm trading iron condors. Nope, I prefer iron flies. No, I prefer butterflies or they never went away. And Dan, without cheating, what do you think won in our poll, sir? I'm going iron condors, baby. You are correct, sir. Yes, 45.8% of the audience said, yes, we are in the middle of an Iron Condor Assant stand. And they are in fact, they are trading them right now. So nearly half the audience, Dan, Iron Condor Assants. Interesting. Number two, we had, nope, I prefer traditional butterflies. Exactly a third, 33.3%. Then we had, they never went away. So they've always been trading Iron Flies, 12.5%. Or excuse me, Iron Condors. Iron Flies is today's subject. Spoiler. And then bring up the rear, no, I prefer Iron Flies, 8.3%. That kind of sparked an interesting conversation on the show last week, Dan, because you and I were talking, obviously, doing our Iron Condor refresher on the show. We got into a back and forth. I mentioned a joke, one of our old compatriots on volatility views, Mr. Short Vol himself, Don Schlesinger, used to say on that show, which is an Iron Condor is an Iron Butterfly for cowards. I've always laughed at that. I always found it pretty funny. But it got into a little bit of a discussion about iron flies versus iron condors and perhaps the, the suitability of one versus the other, or perhaps even the swappability of one versus the other. So we would be remiss if we did not spend some time this week, I think, exploring the other half of that combo, which is, of course, the iron butterfly. I'll break it down in a second exactly what it is, listeners. But first, Dan, overall, 10,000 foot, what are your thoughts on the iron butterfly as a position, sir? Just like any strategy, Mark, it has its place. Uh, I feel like it's it's not a substitute for an iron condor. I feel it's a different strategy, and I'm looking forward to talking about it. All right, we're going to get into that. That point counterpoints. Is it a substitute? Is it not? We shall see here. We shall settle that age old debate here today. On that, maybe that should be another question of the week. <laughs> Can one sub for the other? We've got other questions flying fast and furious right now, but maybe we'll get to that in a future episode here. But let's break it down first. What the heck are we talking about? What is this crazy named thing, Iron Butterfly? You know, this is one of those ones people always hold out and say, Where the hell do these options and names come from? <laughs> Dan, you must get this a lot with your mentees too. People are always confused by certain names, but Iron Butterfly usually seems to really resonate with people. They always think of Inagata de Vida, right? No, you know, the, Mark, it's funny. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but the name for the spread Iron Butterfly comes because the lead singer for the band Iron Butterfly used to trade these all the time. Nonstop. When he wasn't hitting hot riffs on the guitar, <laughs> he was slinging the old Iron. He, I think he actually was the creator of the spread. The Genesis was. He was on stage one day and he thought, wait a minute. Why am I messing around with these iron condor things? These are for cowards. I'm going straight to the fire. And thus, <laughs> thus the iron butterfly was born. All right. Exactly. There, there we go. There's our fun and options in equal measure there, yeah. listeners. All right, let's get into it. What the heck are we talking? What did he create, this lead singer of Inagata Tavita? 
of Iron Butterfly. The song was Inagata De Vida. Uh, yes, the Iron Butterfly. So let's go back to our old favorite, XYZ. XYZ trading once again around 50 bucks. It's been at 50 bucks in all of our example, trying to keep things steady for you folks, not make it too confusing for a point of entry for you. So this is another example where you think the stock is going to move. It's going to go somewhere beyond 50 in the next month. But you're not sure which direction. So you decide, you know what you're going to do? You're going to buy a straddle. You're going to buy a long at-the-money straddle. With all the issues inherent in those, go back and check out our archives. We talked about straddles, the pros and cons, many times here on the show here. So go back in the archives if you want to refresh on straddles. But in general, $50 at-the-money, one-month straddle. In our example, you spend $2 for the call. Two dollars for the put. Put them both together. You just spent four bucks. What does that get you? That means anywhere the underlying moves for the next month, you're going to capture it. But also, you can do the basic math. It also needs to move four bucks <laughs> for you to break even. That's one of the early downsides of a long straddle. Is that they're kind of pricey. You're buying two at the money options after all. So you need the stock to rally to fifty four dollars or drop to forty six dollars to really break even on this trade. So you need this thing to really move which is the difficult challenge to overcome sometimes. So maybe you're looking at that, you bought this thing, and now you're thinking, I don't know if I can make that much of a move. And maybe also you're a little bit disconcerted by the fact that I just shelled out nearly 10% of the value of the stock for a one-month options trade. What can I do to perhaps mitigate some of that outlay? And this is where the iron butterfly comes in. So against that long straddle, you're not going to turn around and sell a 10% out-of-the-money strangle against it. That's effectively what an iron butterfly is, listeners, an at-the-money straddle versus an out-of-the-money strangle. In our example, we're going to talk from the long side, but you can also go short. I know that's the way Dan likes to lean. We'll get into all that fun in a second. So in our example, 10% out-of-the-money, you're going to sell the 55-strike call. In our example, you get a nice buck for that. So, And also, you're going to go $5 out-of-the-money to the downside, sell the 45-strike put also collecting a buck. So there you go. Now you've bought an at-the-money 50-strike straddle. You spent $4 for it. You sold the 55 call against it to the upside. You sold the 45 put against it to the downside. You collected a dollar each for those. So now in our example, you have now cut your outlay in half. You are down to $2. So what have you done now? Well, a couple of things. First off, the obvious 50% reduction in cost. That's a pretty decent thing. The other side of that, of course, is you've also limited your profit potential now. Anything beyond the 55 strike to the upside or the 45 strike to the downside, you're not really going to play it anymore. And in fact, also, you've capped your upside on this trade to effectively the width, the max width of those spreads minus what you paid. So in that case, the max width of that spread, 50 to 55, is $5. A $5 spread can only be worth $5 at max. So the most you can make is $5 on that minus the 2 bucks that you spent. So the most you can make in either direction is going to be $3. So that's your position that you put on at the end of the day. So pros and cons of this type of position, you could see, obviously, the pro is you have an at-the-money straddle. So you're going to participate in every tick of this underlying, no matter where it goes, up or down, away from that at-the-money strike. So you're getting a lot of the bang for the buck of the at-the-money straddle, but also The con of that is that you're not getting all of it. You're going to limit yourself in both directions. Also, it's still a pretty expensive strategy, even though you have cut the cost, in our example, in half. And also, at the same time, if you're going on the long side, you also have all the issues that are still inherent in being long and at the money straddle, which is those options are going to decay more rapidly than just about anything else on the board. At the money is, of course where theta is at its highest, and that's where you're going to feel the sting of theta decay the most aggressively. So if you're long an at-the-money straddle, you need that thing to start moving pretty quickly. You can't sit around. Every day you sit around, that straddle is going to lose value, and it's going to lose it 2x because you have two at-the-money contracts. So that's something where you need that straddle to really get up and go and go pretty quickly. So, Dan, I just walked folks through The long iron fly example. First off, tell me your thoughts on the use case for that. And then B, why do you prefer to go to the short side, sir? You know, Mark, uh, I mean, notwithstanding what I said a few moments ago that every strategy has its uh, own little niche in the options uh, landscape here. But um, I'm I'm hard-pressed to find 
any actual practical times when I would want to trade a long one where I'm buying the straddle, looking for moves, and then selling a, a wider strangle. I just, I don't know. I, and, you know, maybe maybe it's it's just a mental block, but I mean, if you're going to go and, and buy a straddle, like you just, you want a big move and this just truncates it, you know? And, and I know that this can be a way to, um, you know, to play a big move uh, or, you know, a, a less big move, I guess I should say. But man, I just have such a hard time uh, finding a use case for this. It, it, it can be done, but most of the time, I would just rather go for that that outright straddle. I'm, and you know, outright straddles are hard to trade. We've talked about that a number of times on this show. But um, you lose less with this, but you, you know, you don't make as much either. So in our example, if we flipped it on its head, listeners, we go the other way. You're going to sell that at the money straddle for $4 now. And then because you are worried that the worst may come to pass, this thing may explode in one direction or the other, you're going to buy that out of the money 55, 45 strangle against it to protect yourself against a worst case scenario. So in that case, you are now collecting a net $2 for selling that straddle. Remember, $4 for the straddle minus $2 for the strangle that you bought. So your net premium harvested on that trade is two dollars and it's everything else we just talked about in reverse so the max value of those spreads in either direction is going to be five dollars so the most you could lose on this trade now is three dollars as opposed to your max gain before so that's what dan is talking about here in terms that's how he likes to approach the old iron fly here which is from the dark side i'd be curious for you folks out there if you do trade iron butterflies or if you if you're curious about them how would you utilize this strategy would you be a long iron fly or a short iron fly trader i'm curious hit us up uh, let us know i also want to do a quick comparison and contrasting to what we talked about last week which is of course the iron condor because these strategies are often bandied about in similar terms and sometimes in the same sentence dan doesn't think they belong there we'll get to that and why he thinks that in a second. But really quickly, what we talked about last week, listeners, remember the iron fly, what we just talked about, XYZ is at 50, you're going to be longer, short, the at the money straddle, and then short, if you're long the straddle or long, if you're short the straddle, the out of the money strangle against it, you're going straight at the money, you're not really messing around. Iron condor, I think it's fair to say you're doing a little bit of messing around, you're building in a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more cushion, maybe you're just not that convinced on the trade, hence the the joke that the iron condor is the iron butterfly for cowards because now you saw the same scenario. XYZ is still hanging out at 50, but rather than going for a straight longer short at the money straddle on the 50 strike, you decide oh, I'm going to build in a little bit of cushion. So instead you first in our example, we went long. So we bought an all the money strangle and we pushed it out five handles. So we bought the 45 55 strangle. And then against that, we sold another out of the money strangle, we sold the 40 60 strangle. So that essentially you're doing two out of the money strangles. You can also think of it as buying the 45 40 put spread and the 55 60 call spread. Of course, flip that if you're going to sell those. So you can see right off the bat, there is a big difference between these two strategies. And I'm guessing this is what Dan is going to allude to when he talks about his, his similarities and differences between the two, because one again is straight at the money. So certainly if you're selling it, you're going to benefit more immediately from the decay component, which is why an iron butterfly can certainly be an attractive for a premium seller because you're selling at the money. That's where you're going to get the max premium decay at the end of the day. In the case of the iron condor, you're going a little bit away from the at the money. You're still going to get premium decay, obviously, but not quite as rapid, not quite as aggressive. And also, again, you have a little bit of cushion built in there. So if things start moving around, it's not going to impact you immediately versus the iron butterfly, which if you're short that thing, every tick is going to cost you money. So intriguing stuff afoot. Again, these strategies are often discussed and talked about interchangeably. But Dan, you hold up your finger, you say nay. These should not be discussed in the same conversation. They're completely different. Why do you say that, sir? Well, <clears throat> because it kind of, I mean, it comes down to... Um, it comes down to a couple of things. One is it comes down to theta. One is it comes down to the width of the break evens. And, you know, one, it comes from the timing of the trade. 
So <clears throat> with iron condors, which we talked about last time, I think it was last time, we talked about them at some point, uh, the break-evens are wider by definition, so we know that. But the theta tends to be a little more uh, stable. You like you get more theta when there's more time in relative terms, like if we're comparing it with a, a butterfly or iron butterfly, um, because at the money options decay at a very, very fast rate. The more at the money they are, the faster of a rate they decay at. Uh, and so when we're talking about an iron butterfly, like those options, if we're doing this as a non-directional one, those options are right at the money. And as time moves towards expiration, that theta just gets bigger and bigger. That's why I always say you should keep your your butterflies and iron butterflies, you know, like a week and a half or less to expiration. Uh, whereas with an iron condor, because they're not exactly at the money, I mean, they're near enough to the money, they, they, the theta does grow as time passes, but it doesn't grow as much, which means it stays a little bit more stable, which means that you can put them on with more time until expiration. That really comes down to more of a break-even play, as in, like, as long as it stays between the break-evens, it wins, as opposed to, uh, you know, an exponentially increasing theta play, which is what the butterfly family ones are. An exponentially increasing theta play. So the way I, I've kind of jokingly referred to them on both of these shows is the kind of the way I've often talked about them on the network, which is, again, if you want to go close to the fire, you want to go straight at the money. In the case of Dan, he likes to approach these from the short side. So we'll talk about them now from the short side. So if we're going to talk about a short iron butterfly, obviously, that's appealing to be short and at the money straddle. As Dan just mentioned, as I was talking about earlier, at the money is where your theta decay rate is the highest. So you're going to see the most bang for that buck very quickly there in that iron butterfly. The downside, of course, as I mentioned, you are now short a ton of gamma. <laughs> you're collecting theta. That means you're short a ton of gamma. So, of course, you're going to sweat every single tick of that underlying away from the at the money strike until expiration. And I've seen it many times when I used to go down on the floor of the SIBO around expiration time. I'm sure Dan can tell stories about this as well. Back when expiration Friday was really a thing, when options only expired once a month, it was a big deal. And you could tell instantly when you walked into the pit who was long premium and who was short premium. Because the long premium guys, for the most part, were hanging out. They were having fun. They were, they were doing their normal thing. Short premium guys, before the bell even rang, they were sweating buckets. They were popping tums. They were staring at two things. They were staring at the clock, and they were staring at the stock ticker. And every tick in the underlying, away from whatever strike they were short, you could tell they felt it viscerally. They would shudder. So if you want that to be your lot in life, if you're okay with that, some folks are down with that. They like that. They're willing to sweat a little bit to make their money. That's fine. That's up to you. Just know if you're going to come in and you're blasting away at short iron flies, that's going to be your lot in life. Now, obviously, this is risk mitigated. You are buying that strangle against it. So you know at the outset your max loss. You just don't want to get there right away. And so, of course, the iron condor, if that sounds a little bit intimidating for you, you're like, I don't know if I'm ready to go straight short at the money. The iron condor gives you a little bit of that cushion, a little bit of that wiggle room. And you can set up the iron condor however you like. We did ours. 10% out of the money in our example, but a lot of people like to do iron condors in a variety of different ways. If you listen to Options Playbook Radio, you've heard Brian likes to set them up usually around the straddle. So he'll say whatever the at the money straddle is pricing in, he'll start the legs of his iron condor, or whatever he's doing, usually start them at the distance away from the at the money that that straddle is. So that gives you a built-in cushion so people will do one standard deviation, whatever they feel comfortable with, however you like to choose that first leg of that short iron condor whatever is most comfortable for you. But you can set that up a lot of different ways. So there is more inherent wiggle room in the iron condor and, again, more cushion. So if it sounds a little intimidating to dive into the deep end of the iron butterfly right away, and it is, trust me, then maybe you want to start with the iron condor. Now, Dan, for you, I'm curious, you don't view these strategies as really placing one for the other. So in your mind, when you're looking at a short iron fly and a short iron condor, when would you do one versus the other, sir? Yeah. Okay. So like 
let me predicate this with free tip of the day. Like, this is what I tell all our students is like, you know, the number one secret proprietary rule of, of all market taker traders is you sh- whenever you have any opportunity, you should look at three different ways to trade it. Uh, so, you know, compare and contrast. When you see a neutral strategy, look at the iron butterfly <clears throat> and look at the iron condor. Typically, what you're going to find is when there's a bigger, when you need a bigger range, it's always going to work out where the iron condor is just going to end up more attractive. And when, um, you know, and when you are looking at a shorter time horizon, a lot of times the iron butterfly is going to be more attractive. So there's actually, I guess that's three rules for you. And if you stick to those, holy cow. Uh, that's going to take you far on this whole conversation. I think I'm going to say the one ironclad hot tip from MTM you always share with your listeners is just listen to Mark Longo and everything he says, and you'll be good, right? <laughs> that's the starting tip for everybody who comes into MTM, right? <laughs> uh, Mark, this is a serious show. Come on. <laughs> How dare you, sir? How dare you? Just for that, I'm going to end the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, all you pro folks. You got more coming in your ear holes straight away after this while you folks on demand. Unfortunately, you have to wait a week. Now, I'm curious for you folks out there. We've kind of done the refreshers on both the Iron Butterfly and the Iron Condor. I'm curious, what are your use cases? Do you trade these? Do you not trade these? Are you thinking about dipping your toes into these? Do you view them as somewhat substitutable strategies? Do you prefer them to the long side or to the short side? These are all questions I want to hear from you folks. We can help tailor future content for you. But these are interesting times. Obviously, you folks think we are on the cusp of an Iron Condor Assant. So we wanted to approach the Iron Butterfly for you today as a way, if perhaps you want to turn things up to 11, you're a little bit comfortable sticking your feet in the fire and return for higher theta decay, then allow me to present the Iron Butterfly as an alternative for you. And Dan... If folks want to reach out to you over there at MTM so they can get your number one options tip, which is listen to me, where should they go? What should they do? Oh, well, make your way on over to MarketTaker.com, which um, which a lot of our listeners do. And, and we're really grateful for that. Uh, and we're really grateful for the opportunity to be one of your guides. So just come over to uh, MarketTaker.com. You can always hit us up. You can join free. We've got lots of free content, which is especially great for new folks. Uh, You can join our chat room, which temporarily right now is free. And um, I'm posting trades in there all day long. And uh, there's a a lot of great free resources there. So you're invited. Come on over. I am always amazed how many of our listeners are actually MTM members, which I guess shows you, Dan, at the end of the day, there's no accounting for taste. They have the good taste to listen to us here. Then they join you at MTM. You know, alas. I cannot stop them. So if you, too, want to join the bad taste palooza that is over there at mtmmarkettaker.com. Two T's. Don't forget the second T for Theta. And that's going to do it for us this week. You live folks, hang out. We'll be back instantaneously with episode two, listeners. We're going to go even deeper into all these crazy winged spreads, diving into our debate about the right timing. When should you really be using a butterfly? I think that's kind of an interesting discussion. Very timely. We're going to get into that. For you live folks right now, for you on-demand folks, that'll be hitting next week. And, of course, you folks, stay safe out there. We'll see you back for the next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Bootcamp. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.